Level 1 magic users in old school D&D have it tough. You can't wear armor, the only weapons you can use are staves and daggers, and it's not that unlikely that you will start the game with only one hit point. You also only start off with a single spell. This means that it's all the more important to choose a starting spell that will help keep you and your party among the living until you can gain some levels and a little bit more endurance. Hi, I'm Ben, and today on Questing Beast, we will be looking at three of the strongest choices for level one magic user spells in Old School Essentials, or OSE, which is my preferred retro clone for early Dungeons and Dragons. Especially if you are new to Old School D&D, you might be very surprised at how powerful some of these early spells are when compared to their fifth edition equivalents, with some of them remaining excellent choices even when you've reached a higher level. Before we start though, this video is sponsored by Swords and Chaos, an RPG that weds old school and new school design to produce a pulse-pounding sword and sorcery experience, finely crafted to emulate the feeling of a classic tale straight from the pulps. Play larger-than-life characters in a grim and wicked age. Swords and Chaos is powered by the D20-based Siege Engine. Those familiar with the OSR, Castles and Crusades, or even 5th edition will be able to dive in right away. Are you prepared for high adventure, inspired by the works of Robert E. Howard, Charles Saunders, or other titans of the genre? If so, check it out on Kickstarter using the link below. All right, you've made your first magic user. You've equipped him with a 10-foot pole and 50 feet of rope, and it's time to decide his spell. What to pick? My first choice here is Light. Yes, Light, which you may know as a cantrip from 5e. There aren't any cantrips in early D&D, so in Old School Essentials, it's just a level 1 spell. It's also not quite as bright, but apart from that, Old School Light has a number of distinct advantages. First, it lasts longer, 1 hour plus 10 minutes per level. That becomes a big deal in a game that's as exploration-focused as Old School Essentials because it extends the amount of time that you can spend in the dungeon before running out of illumination, and therefore increases the amount of gold and XP that you can gain. Uh, next is Range. In 5e, it's just a touch spell, while in Old School Essentials, you can cast it up to 120 feet away. But the most important difference is that in Old School Essentials, Light is also an offensive weapon. If light is cast on the eyes of an enemy and it fails to save, remember that you don't have to touch it to pull this off, it becomes blinded for the full duration. And the book specifically reminds you that blinded creatures cannot attack. What this means is that your level 1 magic user has a shot at completely neutralizing nearly any monster with a single spell. And your odds of succeeding are pretty high, since low hit dice monsters, like the kind that you'll probably see on the first few levels of a dungeon, only save against spells about 25% of the time. On top of this, light, like many old school spells, can also be memorized in a reversed form, darkness, which allows you to create a 30-foot sphere of night that blocks normal sight. Although this won't help you very much against monsters that have infravision, it could be very useful against groups of bandits, for example, especially if you cast it on one of them. My second choice is the spell Sleep. Sleep is already a good spell in 5e, mostly due to it not requiring any saving throws to work, but in Old School Essentials, it is absolutely supercharged. It has a range of 240 feet, and it usually lasts around 100 minutes, instead of the measly one minute that it does in 5th edition. What really sets it apart, though, is the number of creatures that it can affect. Old School Sleep can knock out up to 16 hit dice worth of monsters, usually around 9, while in 5e, it can only affect around 5. On top of that, the book reminds you that sleeping creatures are helpless and can be instantly killed with a bladed weapon. Brutal. It is limited to working on creatures of four hit dice or less, which is a drawback. But if you get swarmed by goblins, then it can be an absolute lifesaver. I've played in dungeon crawls where sleep saved the party by knocking out an entire room full of enemies, who are then quickly dispatched. Under the right conditions, sleep is more powerful than fireball, and you get it at level one. My third and final pick is Charm Person, and this is one of the most magical and game-altering spells out there, especially given the fact that new characters can get it. Unlike in 5e, where the target just regards you as a friendly acquaintance uh, when they fall under your spell, in OSD they become a trusted friend and ally who will actually fight to defend you and obey your orders, effectively giving you a man-at-arms and compensating your magic user for their lack of armor and HP. But that's not the really fun part. The really fun part is the duration. How long do you think a spell like this should last? Uh, an hour, like in 5e? Six hours? A whole day? No. In old school D&D, Charm Person works indefinitely. The target does get to make occasional saves to see if they break free of the enchantment, but for low intelligence creatures, this only happens 
once per month. Smarter creatures can check once per week or even once per day if they have exceptional intelligence. As long as they keep failing, though, the spell just keeps going. In theory, this could let you recruit uh, whole squads of humanoid monsters to fight for you, turning your magic user into a kind of one-man army. I love how mythic this spell feels, and it provides a really good reason for why most people fear to look into a wizard's eyes. A spell like this could be somewhat counterbalanced if you were running a game where time passes in between sessions, but for your standard campaign, it's incredible and gives magic users a ton of versatility, especially if you're charming humanoids that are influential or have special abilities or magic items that could be useful. So those are my three picks for new magic users. Hopefully that gives you a sense of how rad this class can be in old school D&D. Spells like this also drive home how much of an impact old school D&D is willing to let you have on the world. It's awfully hard to railroad your players when they can blind your boss monster, mentally control your NPCs, and knock out whole squads of foes at level one. But you're still not a superhero. With your low hit points, a single straight arrow could take you out. So you need to always be scheming and planning ahead. You know, like a wizard. Do you have any personal preferences for the beginning spells that you like to take when playing old school D&D? Leave it down there in the comments below. Before we wrap up, special thanks today goes out to all of the new patrons who joined the Questing Beast Patreon in the month of March. It's thanks to people like them that I can keep doing this, which is why they get behind the scenes looks at projects I'm working on, like Nave Second Edition, and special access to the Questing Beast Discord, and more. They are C. Dobb, Rodney Pets, Cowboy Billy, The Gorgon, Level 2 Janitor, Daniel Bacchus, Pyjama Tank, Benjamin Wassum, Timothy Sappington, Matthias Wasser, Colby Boucher, Jeff, Marco, Woodrow Dixon, Stanley J. Ward, Luke Abel, Benjow Benjow, Caleb Adkins, Austin Mathis, The Augur, Sybil Glendevin, Philip, Firewall 200, Irin M., Hillion Yesser, Ricky Mystic, Anias Birr, Lucas Cotterell, Cyanomis, Dave Lindsay, Dead Bob, Potion Seller, Andrew Prentice, John, Enrico Baldini Maruli, Wicked Ink, and Grugon. Thanks so much for supporting the channel, and thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time.